This is Jimbo JTech back with the fourth video for my new series of music production videos for Sonic Academy. In this video, we're gonna work on one of the hardest aspects of a big epic soaring trance song, writing the trance stack. We're gonna be creating some melodic chords and we're gonna be running them through a bunch of different layers that are gonna help fill out the sound space and really drive that trance feel home. So let's dive right in. In this video, we're going to look at creating a stack of chords for a trance song. It's something that is so quintessential to the Anjuna Beats sound and the sound of the trance world in general. It's also one of the hardest things to nail in a song and is often one of the most undercooked aspects of a track from up and coming producers in the trance world. Uh, so, you know, the main thing to think about with um, a chord stack is, you know, are you sort of representing uh, the impact and the power of this chord progression in the way that you want uh, in such a way that it's filling out the sound space. Um, and in, in doing so, you also need to make sure that all these different parts are distinct enough from each other that the whole sound stage doesn't sound washed out and, and things start to, to compete with each other for the listener's attention. Um, so there is a bit of an art to sort of stacking things. Um, and it's a bit like making a, a delicious chord sandwich, really. Like you're just sort of stacking all your ingredients on top of each other and they need to work well with each other. And uh, it can be tricky to do that sometimes. Um, but as you've seen, you know, previously, and I think, you know, is sort of becoming a recurring theme throughout this entire secret series of videos is, you know, you start small and you work your way up. So the first thing I'm going to do, I've got an init patch here. And if you're using Anna, you can just click that little init there. And, uh, there's a lovely, um, saw wave type sound with absolutely no character to it whatsoever, right? Um, so just going to give you a quick play of what we covered in the last video. So once again, these, uh, these four notes that, you know, form the, uh, the, uh, the root of our chords, are going to come back into play here for this chord progression, which is undoubtedly going to sound cheap and tacky to begin with. Here we go. So once again, I'm, I'm not sweating the final outcome of the chord too much at this stage, but I'm trying to add notes, stack them on top in a way that's going to make them work. So pretty simple, um, you know, I had an idea in my head of what notes I wanted to reach for there, but if you are still sort of like finding your feet with this, I think it's okay to noodle around and, and wait until you, you know, you hit on a, a second note for your chord that sort of sounds cool to you. So suddenly there's a tiny, tiny little bit of extra depth here. So uh, in the previous video I talked about, um, or in one of the previous videos, uh, I talked about how you've got these four, five, and seven of the scale that can really go with whatever else you're doing in a, in this in this melodic minor key. So uh, once again, I think if I'm looking for some extra notes to stack on, you know, those are my sort of go-to, like my little secret weapon, four, five, and seven. So let's give that a try. And in fact, for this first chord, um, you know, very simple right now, but let me just add that four, five, and seven. So what's happening there? You've got this, we already had these sort of, these two notes which suggested a minor key. And then we're adding all of this, this extra accoutrement on top, which is making it uh, more uh, emotive and it's, it's, it's deepening the message of the chord, but it's also increasing the complexity of it, which is a bit more, you know, taxing on the listener. So the more notes that you add into the chord and the more inventive the chord is, the, the more cerebral it sort of becomes and the heart of the listener actually has to work. I'm 
I'm adding that four, five, and seven again. And notice how different the second chord is just because of those, those bass notes that are different. Here, I'm gonna just do That's the sort of simple, you know, F sharp major chord, but just adding that five note from this key. Just adds a little bit more complexity and a little bit more interestingness. So, uh, This, this chord progression from this song is actually a good example of how this trick can really work well. So the next thing I did for this particular song was I made it syncopated, which means uh, everything is sort of peppered uh, on top of the rhythm of the bass line to sort of fill in all of the, the notes in between. And so the only place where the chord and the bass actually hit together is on the very, very first note of the sequence. So... Let me show you what that looks like. And then that's sort of uh, repeated. I'm in eighth notes right now. That's what I wanted. I can small that. Okay. And you can also jam these in if you want to do that, do it that way as well. So, you know, ideally I should have done this rhythm first because it's going to sort of save me a bit of time, you know, doing that all again, but. And there's still that empty beat there for the sort of breath in the, fr in the phrase. So yeah, um, now that I've, I've talked you through those notes, I'm just going to do this super quick. And make it, I'm going to make it even a little bit simpler. Pretty much the same notes though. should really have that three note, which is the bass line in the, the root of the bass line. So we've got our notes and they're playing through this incredibly tacky sounding instrument right now, but it's also an extremely simple instrument, which makes you able to sort of focus on the notes and they sort of cut through the mix very easily. So then it's about feeding these notes into a few different layers and you want them all to do, to do different things. And uh, for every layer, I'm always trying to bring a sense of something. Um, I do have a main saw layer. Now, um, in the interest of sort of saving time, because a lot of my layers were frozen out uh, to save CPU, I'm recreating these pretty much, like pretty close to how they were. The instruments are actually slightly different from the original version, but that's okay for the, for the purposes of this demonstration. Um, so I've got an Anna here. And I'm just gonna put these notes, feeding them into the instrument, which makes it easier because you don't have to think too hard about the notes in tandem with the instrument. You're sort of separating those two processes. Like I said, I'm a big fan of turning off, uh, you know, delays and reverbs and, and dialing them in later to fit the song rather than the other way around. I'm gonna turn on that magical sidekick, which automatically makes everything sound more fun and pumping and exciting. So I've got this kind of main saw and it's doing one thing and it's currently sort of sitting in the mono space actually, which is nice. Uh, it's nice to have, you know, your meat and potatoes in the mono space. 
Um, next, I'm going for like a layer of heavenliness. And like I said, like, you know, any describing word that you can think of, you can make a layer to bring a sense of that. It's just a matter of sort of dreaming it up. Um, so this is going to be an octave up. And I've dialed in these instrument settings a little bit in advance so that I'm not noodling around too much in the, in the actual uh, video. So this is a, an octave up. It's got some of its low end taken out. Super simple EQing. If you're if you're gonna EQ stuff at this phase of the mix, it needs to be as simple as possible. Really, I've got a five second delay on there with about thirty three percent wet, so it's sort of just like pushing it out into the into the you know virtual space, and a little bit of that of that uh, side chain compressor that we all love so much. And so with with a track like this, I would I would actually. I'd be happy to use both the internal sidechain and a little bit of extra on top if it needs it. Just to, it's okay to have a couple of instruments pumping really hard. So that heavenly layer, it, it takes the, the, the meat and potatoes of the uh, main saw and then it wraps it in bacon. It's filling a space that's all around that center space, but it's not actually competing with it. The reason that these two sounds are buddies is because this one's an octave down. So it's happening further down, like down in the frequency spectrum, the heavenly layers sitting up. So they're sitting next to each other on the frequency spectrum. They're not standing in the same place of the frequency spectrum. Um, the heavenly has more uh, sort of you know, reverb on it. So it's not as front and center. It's sort of pushed back in a 3D, what kind of way. And uh, it also has more stereo. So it's sort of more out to the sides. And you could even make that more exaggerated if you wanted to. You could take this second layer, because the first one is mono, you could make the second one super wide and that would give you that super wide sound. So they, they click nicely together. And really the question that I'm asking when I'm layering sounds is like, are these sounds buddies? Are they working with each other or are they working against each other? Are they coming together to sing in unison or are they competing for attention on the stage? I can hear them both distinctly. And I have a suspicion that if I collapse the whole song down to mono, I'd be able to hear everything still like distinctly. Um, I've got a bite layer. Um, I'm going to run you through this super quick. This is adding a little, it's like a little crispiness, the little deep friedness to the, to the sound in some ways, you know, we've got these clean, you know, we've got the clean, so we've got the heavenly sort of like floating, you know, and this is sort of more nasty. It's a layer of nastiness. This is uh, a noise oscillator. I use this J106HP with Serum. You have all of these fun different little noise generators you can play with. There's an oscillator, a simple saw oscillator here. It is actually the most basic one in Serum. And there's a side chain uh, LFO, which you just load from here. And that basically you can drag this side chain to the volumes of these and it'll make them actually side chain like an LFO tool type, you know, side chain compression ducking inside the synth. It's then run to a, a compressor with the multiband switched on and the threshold pulled down a little bit. Like listen to how much of a difference that makes without that compressor on. So this layer is also adding a sense of complete smashedness without smashing the whole song and a little bit of low EQ taken out. So that adds some bite to the whole stack. And this definitely combines with the saw main, you know, they sort of smush together, but I think it's within acceptable limits. And then lastly, I added a sense, a juicy synth to make it feel a bit juicier. And this is just a, a patch that I found in Anna and it's got some chorus on it and you know, that pumping. And this actually does have a little bit of spatial stuff on it, you know, um, which once again, it's like always try switching it off. So all these things come together uh, in a way that presents one sound to the listener. They don't know that it's being created by four different channels, but ideally they shouldn't be competing with each other and they should all come across as one convincing stack.
The other thing you can do if you don't already have a sub bass happening in your song, and this one I do, and the chords are, you know, syncopated with that, is that you can, um, you could even add a layer of just the root note of the chords with this rhythm and a sub bass. And then that, you know, if you had that happening in a breakdown, it would make the stack feel really big because it would have a sub element in it as well. So that wraps it up for this video on chord stacks and how I layer things and uh, keep them distinct from each other. So stay tuned for the next video. We're going to be looking at creating riffs and plucks to make the song feel more trancy and ravey. Stay tuned.